Crimson Skies for, well, Windows 98, I suppose. It's an awesome flying game based on the fantastic alternate history universe which started off as a board game. Just to set the scene a bit here, the year is 1937 and following the First World War, and due to various factors including the Depression and Prohibition, the United States and Canada have split into a whole host of different nations, including the Empire State, Nation of Hollywood, Republic de Quebec, and the Confederation of Dixie. For reasons that aren't really adequately explained, this division means that land transport is now largely impossible, and so aeroplanes and zeppelins become the preferred method of getting about. During the game, you play as Nathan Zachary, a dashing gentleman air pirate and leader of the Fortune Hunters, very much akin to Robin Hood and his Merry Men, with the time spent searching for treasure and helping the less fortunate. It's a really nice setting, and the game presents itself very well, with cool backgrounds in the menus showing you the interior of your zeppelin, the Pandora. On top of this, the writing and voice acting is perfect. Not exactly what you call Oscar-winning stuff, but it really suits the pulpy feel of the game. Oh, that's right. And let's get this straight, sister. Errol Flynn pretends to be me, not the other way around. <laughs> the gameplay is very arcadey, allowing you to really throw your plane around without worrying too much about stalling or crashing into the ground. It's also very noticeable that your guns will automatically follow your targets, but you can turn that off if you want to. The objectives you have to accomplish are pretty cool, as they often require you to pull off interesting stunt maneuvers, such as flying low over a bomber so that Nathan can jump out and hijack it. Seriously, how cool is that? This sort of thing happens a lot, and the game gets the difficulty balance of doing these things just right. The game plays well enough with just a keyboard, but also lets you use a joystick or even the mouse, but I've been using the Xbox 360 controller and it works pretty well, and I can definitely recommend some form of analog control when playing. Even so, you still need the keyboard to do some stuff, such as auto-docking, because there's nothing more annoying than finishing a mission and then crashing your plane into the Pandora while you're trying to dock and have to start all over again. That's something that's not so good about the game, there are no checkpoints, and failing means you have to start all the way at the beginning of the level, which can get very tedious. The levels are very well designed, usually with two or three missions in each setting, which include Hawaiian Islands, military bases, and American cities like New York and Los Angeles, and there's always loads of interesting stuff to see. They can get quite tough towards the end, but this level in particular, where you have to dogfight against planes whilst flying a military helicopter, is just impossible. Enemies dive from the clouds and strafe you with fire before you can even react. Luckily though, the game lets you skip ahead if you keep failing on a mission, which is nice, because you want to see everything that this game has to offer, and you can always go back later. Like, nine years later. No, no, I still can't do it. As a little side quest, each level has a number of stunt locations that you have to find and fly through, which the game saves in a scrapbook along with other keepsakes from your adventures. One of my favourite things about the game is the music. The title theme is just so cool and it sounds exactly right, mixing piratey themes with an Indiana Jones type feel. In addition to this, you get some stirring scores during missions, wrapped up by the funny 40s swing music when you complete an objective. Aside from the voice acting, which I already mentioned, the sound effects are good too, such as the chatter of the 30 cal machine guns and the resonating boom of the 70 cals. Something that took up way too much of my time when I played this game was the plane customization. You can take any plane that you've seen in the game and customize its weapons, armor, paint and so on using the money that you earned playing the campaign, and then use it in the missions. You can also get a couple of freebies when you steal them during the story. Something interesting to note is that all the planes, even the most ridiculous looking ones, are based on designs and concepts from real life. Look, this one has a turret on the back. That's just awesome. There's also a multiplayer dogfight mode, which I've never played against more than one person, but if you have friends with copies of the game, then it's definitely worth trying out. So, is Crimson Skies worth picking up? I say definitely, especially as you can now get it extremely cheap. Sit back and immerse yourself in the silly planes, racial stereotypes and daring do, because in my opinion, this is one of the best arcade flying games ever made. <laughs>